It's the biggest protest in Budapest in years. I'm here with David, a 23-year-old Jewish Hungarian. He's one of the three young people I and my fellow reporters will meet during the show. Three people who face discrimination. Uh, look, it would be good if you would like uh, record them because they are like the far-right people standing on the other side of the street. We're not here long before a group of neo-Nazis turns up on the scene. I don't know if they are really here to protest for the freedom of the internet. Probably they just want to provoke. As you heard before, like, he just shouted Jidok, which means Jews. So uh, yeah, probably they want to provoke a bit at the people. How, that, how does that make you feel like when you see that? I'm, I'm afraid of the future of the country. And I'm afraid that it's like, uh, instead of tolerance, uh, we are talking about hate and what you, you hear. That this, this demonstration has nothing to do with the Jews, nothing to do with anything, but he was shouting Jews. The protest is supposed to be about the new internet tax, but more than 10,000 Hungarians are here to vent their general frustration with the government. But if the revolution is starting and people go in, we go in with them, okay? okay good. David is surprised and happy that so many people have turned up to make their voices heard. But this enthusiasm turns into disappointment when the thugs show up again. I don't think that the demonstration should end like this. Uh, like in, my, in the ideal world, I think it's like it would be the still the whole crowd is coming here and they have a silent protest and not uh, breaking windows or chanting against Jews or gypsies. Where do you think is this, is this all going to? I don't know. It's like I have plans to leave, but it's still my home and uh, my hometown. I don't know. But I, I have like strong intention to leave, but I can't tell you which, which is going to be stronger. The Jewish community has always been an essential part of Hungarian society. These days, as has been the case in the past, they're the targets of growing anti-Semitism. To avoid confrontation, many Hungarian Jews prefer to live in a kind of bubble, David tells me. But it seems almost impossible to escape anti-Semitism even here in the Jewish quarter. Would you find that often? Yeah. Yeah, but we don't consider swastikas as uh, anti-Semitic incidents because it's not uh, directly against Jews and there is uh, too many of them, so it's no use to deal with them. David watches out for anti-Semitic signs and slogans online and here on the streets of Budapest. And he leads a group of volunteers. They meet up at the Israeli Cultural Institute where they work on their Facebook page, the Forum Against Anti-Semitism. They collect and post acts of cyber hate and present a regular report to the community. I'm surprised at how well David and his friends seem to take it. But there are cases that really upset him. As you can see, it says uh, on the wall that is the Jews are rats. And this is a kindergarten and he is a father. And uh, it's, he published it on his own Facebook page. I find it really sad because like, this is a place where little children go uh, every Every day, and this is if this is their, their environment. Come on, come on. David is working to find more courage. He takes me to his Krav Maga training. Krav Maga was invented by a Hungarian Israeli martial arts trainer to defend the Jewish quarter against fascist groups in the 1930s. Today, it's a popular self-defense method developed for the military in Israel and security forces worldwide. So why is it uh, important for you to do Krav Maga? If one day I will be attacked as a Jew in Hungary, that just gives me more confidence and makes me more secure that I could defend myself. But uh, I, also, I, I, I also think that this is like, uh, like not, in, not in the first place and maybe not in the second. This is what Krav Maga actually teaches you, that you need to be prepared for any attacks and you need to uh, handle uh, every, every conflict. And the potential for conflict seems to be growing. More and more Hungarians support the neo-Nazi party Jobbik. It now has 20% of the seats in parliament. 
I asked for an interview with the Yabik politician several times, but no one was willing to talk to me. It's pretty much expressed by the, uh, by the I want to know how this far-right populist party can gain one out of every five votes in Hungary. But this is something I think a, a huge... After 2006, when the far-right uh, in Hungary became uh, more uh, coherent, more institutionalized and more strong, it was the moment when anti-Semitism uh, began to rise. So there is a, a clear political driver behind it. There, is, there was a crisis period, political crisis, even economic crisis, austerity measures and a new emergent political force, Jobbik, that could exploit the old, uh, these frustrations and name a specific outgroup, the Jews, and that they are the one who blame. Growing racism is worrying many people here in Hungary. The Doani Street Synagogue in Budapest Jewish Quarter is the largest synagogue in Europe. In 1944, around 800,000 Jews lived in Hungary. By the year's end, some 560,000 had been murdered most of them deported to concentration camps by the Nazis. David lost three of his great-grandparents during the Holocaust, but doesn't want to focus on the past. So you should, you should move on. This is like, uh, this is what is, is called history, because this is something that's happened in the past and you need to move on and maybe to, to prevent that it wouldn't happen again. But the way is, is not to, like, to talk about it all the time. And what about your parents? Did they talk about that? And did they, did they talk to you about, uh, about Judaism, about being a Jew and about all the, the heritage? Uh, we actually never really talked about it in the family. But, um, so they don't, anything say, they don't say anything directly. But they always, uh, I, I felt like they, they were always trying to give me the, the impression that uh, like being Jewish, is like it comes with being victimized. David's parents are not happy about their son becoming active in the Jewish community. They are worried because of what their family experienced in the past. But David and his friends are determined to oppose the growing anti-Semitism in their home country with a new generation's self-confidence. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.